Good afternoon everyone, uh, thanks for tuning into my latest video. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you very much for all the messages of support, all the subscribers and all your comments. I, I honestly cannot tell you how much um, I've appreciated it and, 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 and how overwhelmed I've been by it at times as well. Um, I've actually got me, reading some of the comments has got me in a kind of emotional state at times because it is so overwhelming. Um, but I do really appreciate all your support. Um, it's just been amazing to see how quickly it's 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 gotten through. And if you told me that I'd be at almost three thousand subscribers sitting at this time on Friday, I just would I just would never have believed it. So but it's a credit to everyone for for taking the time to to check out the videos and going with the comments. It would appear that that, that people have had enough and that that we're ready for something else. There's no doubt about it. Um, but we need to start thinking about what that looks like um, and how we're going to do that because it obviously has to start with a vision because um, it can't be brought into reality until it has been visualised, if you like. Um, so that that's that's what I would call for people to obviously do. I mean, it's it's just to sort of think about what kind of world you want to live in because um, I know, going by the comments, it's, it's for the vast majority of people, it's not this one. That's That's obvious. Um, the world that we're moving into just now so um, it's a credit to everybody honest to god and there's th there's so many people out there that are so well informed going by the comments and a lot of you are already on your way like and, and the ones that are behind are not too far behind either because they can obviously see something's wrong um and and, I, and like i say i've been really appreciative on and how you've how you've received me and and tell me to keep going and and, and just try to spread the word and some people out there that, that, that sent sent it to, to some, some other outlets and um, trying to obviously share it on social media and I, and I just honestly I can't tell you how thankful I am to every last one of you he's, he's, honestly you are absolutely amazing and, and going by what I've seen I don't think we'll have any problems building a new world and um, because we're better than what we're better than what's been happening to us there's no doubt about that every single one of us are special um, that special is normal we have to remember that um, and, and but we've been convinced we're otherwise and no wonder because when they, this, when this kind of thing's happening it, it pulls you away, it pulls you into a more dense reality because there's no joy and no wonder there's no supposed to be and that's why it's 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 absolutely paramount that we keep going with this and and I'm, I've got no, I, I've no reason to think it won't keep going. And again, I, I just can't tell you how thankful I am to, to every last one of you. You are all amazing. I love you all. Honestly, thank you. Um, so this this is probably going to be the final uh, in DWB D, uh, DWP installment. I would say. Um, I, I mean, there, there has been some things that I've looked through that I've forgotten to cover. There's some a couple of other things that I want to drop in as well. Um, some people in the comment section have obviously reminded me of a couple of things also uh, that I've forgotten to talk about, uh, things like minimum income floors, etc. And, 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 and obviously, as well in the comments, people have been confirming their experiences and saying that the contents of this video is actually correct. Um, and that's obviously, that's pivotal in it as well, because anyone taking a look at the comments will say, well, it's obviously, it's truthful information, so I'll, I'll have a look at that. And, Anyone who may stumble on it in the future, as, as long as it, as long as it lets you know that it's not just happening to you, it's everybody or nearly or a lot of people anyway, because people could be forgiven for for thinking that it was just happening to them. Um, and I used to tell people that all the time, like I used to say, look, it's not just you. Just it doesn't make it any better that it's happening, but it it's not just you. And people are right. They would say, oh Christ, I thought it was just me. And it's like no, it's it's not. There is more people, but it, it's still wrong. Um, so even in that would make people feel better. So if this video can get out there and, and make people feel better um, and realise that actually it is all wrong and, it, and I'm not going crazy, then it'll be at that point change will start to happen. Um, I, that's, I, I want to talk a bit more about um, <clears throat> the, the case manager sabotage in housing and homelessness and, and local housing allowances and some of my experiences with landlords and agents um, and, and, and evictees, people that were getting evicted out of their homes because of some of these policies. And uh, because at Christmas time, there was a, on the mainstream media, 
um, which I don't go to that often, but this I know is true because I'm because I've done this job, where there was a family who were they were just walking about at Christmas time with nowhere to go. They were homeless, and if you'd walked past these people in the street, you wouldn't have thought they were, thought they were homeless. They would just look like a normal family. The the kid had our school uniform on, and they just if you like I said if you'd seen them in the street, they just look like a normal family and. If you'd said they were homeless, you probably wouldn't have believed it if it hadn't have been for the report. But that this British people are actually walking about the streets at Christmas time, looking for homes because they're homeless, and 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 all a lot of it has to do with what's going on here at Universal Credit with their housing. Now the case manager sabotage, and that's what it is. I don't care what any of them say. I'm not saying all of them are like that. They're not. But the, the, there's a lot of case managers that are sabotaging things, especially SMI loans, which I'll come to. So, and like I mentioned in one of the videos where it's the, the, the amount of problems I've seen this housing situation or the, the, the verification of housing cause is just, they're just unreal. People emptying their bank accounts, using their, using their, borrowing from their, uh, their, um, their families. I've even heard of people borrowing from Christmas money to do it and not getting it back and sabotaging their children's Christmas. It's disgusting. And that's all down to people not doing their bloody job. And uh, if a case manager, if one case manager, she may have been, that's maybe the way they do it, but everybody else is doing it wrong, I don't know. But if she can verify everything for a Ukrainian family within four days, that's everything, house and bank account, everything, identity, all of it, then why are we not doing that for everyone? Why are we not doing it for everyone? And there's, 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 there is a, there's a housing shortage in Britain now because of all these people that are coming in and they're quite hard. That's why, that's why it obviously has to stop and um, until it does, it's going to continue. But it'll continue, it'll, it'll just continue to be added to by things like this, this case manager sabotage um, with regards to housing. And it's just, they just, the amount of messages that people leave asking them to call them back it's just, again, it's unreal and they don't get back to them. And of course, uh, one of the, it, it, we all worry from time to time. We all worry about maybe not having enough food. And we need to do this, we need to do that. But there's one thing that worries pe most people more than anything. And that is when the rent's not paid. And the rent not being paid causes massive stress. It, it, I've seen people that, that, that couldn't eat because of it. Saying, look, I'm not eating now because I, I can't, I can't stomach it because I'm so worried about this. That's very, very sad. And that's down to people not doing their job. You want to follow the well of psychopath, you do it. But I hope, I, I hope you can live with yourself in the end of it because you want it will come one day where you will be held accountable for it. And you should be. Because if you're, you're employed to do this bloody job, you will do it. And you probably get paid quite good money for it as well. I mean, it won't be brilliant, but you're getting paid. You're not. You're probably not going to be in hardship over it. So you really need to be earning that money, and that that's how you earn it. And if you can see one case manager doing it for one family, regardless of where that family's from, why can't you do it for other families again, regardless where they're from? Because it can be done, and I know it can be done. Um, so do it. Stop the stress. Stop following the will of psychopaths. Uh, I mean, some of them are so ignorant, it's a wonder they can see straight in front of them. Uh, I mean, I've said this to some work coaches before. Do you, do you, have you got any idea what you're doing? And they just don't ever get back to you because they don't care. And that, again, is, it's, all, it's all really is back to being a better person. If a job's worth doing well, you do it. Or if it's worth doing, you do it well. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, sorry. Um, and, and that's the way I look at it. I mean, these local housing allowances, as I mentioned, these are causing big, big problems. And the, like I said, it's if the, the, if the allowance doesn't cover it, then the, the, you have to make it up. And I had so many people who, there was this one lady in particular and, she was she was a lovely lady and I really enjoyed speaking to her and she she'd got in this house and she was so happy with it and she'd done it up and it had taken a couple of months to get the, 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 the cost verified and it eventually got verified and added on to her statement and she and she she'd realised that there was a few was, I can't remember exactly how much the shortfall was, but it was quite a quite a substantial amount. 
And she'd asked, she said, why is my full rent not being paid? And I'd said to her, I said, look, do you know what the local house in the living says? And she said, no, I don't know what that is. And I explained it to her. And I said, so the shortfall has to be made up by yourself. And she, she, amid, she immediately burst into tears because she knew exactly what it meant. It meant that she was going to have to move out of this home that she'd worked so hard to get and then get into and get everything verified and all sorted out for her kids. And it was just, it's absolutely heartbreaking. People breaking into tears is, they're doing it at least half the time. That's what you're having to deal with. And, and yeah, I mean, vulnerable people as well, they burst into tears all the time as well. Grown men burst into tears all the time. I had grown men tell me they've not ate for seven days and then you show them a bit of compassion and because you've done that, they've burst into tears. Same with a woman I had domestic violence, she constantly had domestic issues with partners and she couldn't under she had just meet these bad guys and I'd show her a bit of compassion and she'd burst into tears because it was like she'd realised there is decent people out there, I'm just meeting the wrong people. And this is the type of claims you're dealing with and well, this is the type of things you're dealing with and like I say, that, that scenario there with the local house and allowance, I, 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 I can't count how many times I've seen that happen. Or told people that, or people even though they just got the keys and then they'd say, Look, how much of my rent are they going to pay? Um, then you tell them, like, Well, I can't afford to make that up, so we can't take the house in. So, local house and allowance, you can calculate it yourself, you'll get it online. Um, just type in local house and allowance, direct gov, it'll come up with an orange banner. You go into it, just put the postcode in of the area, not, not, the, not the authority, just the postcode of the area you wish to move into, and it'll come up with a one, two, three, and four bedroom rates, and then you can obviously ascertain from that whether you can afford it or not. Um, and because that, 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 that's there's so many people didn't even know about it, they just thought the government paid your rent, which at one time was true. But again, that's how they split people and um, keep the rich and the poor apart. Um, but it is causing major, major problems. I mean, even with agents, um, like landlord agents, what they'll do is they'll say to the agent, Look, there was this, this, this actually happened this way. There was a guy, he was obviously happy with the rent he was getting because he didn't put it up. But he must have, I think he, was, he said he was getting busy or whatever. And the, the, the claimant had said that he was getting more busy so he'd had to bring in his agent or get an agent to start taking the rent for them. And this agent had proceeded to tell him that, did you know that your local house now is actually a lot, a lot more than what you're charging? So that means the government would pay it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then that's it. They, they put that up because they put it up because um, it's easier for them. Um, again, it's that concept of like it's okay. It's just the government. It's, that's not. It's us. It's, it's us. They're, it's us. They're, it's us. We're ripping off. No one else. Uh, but who cares? I'll put it up anyway. Because it's and, and who the people need to move out. They're destroying people's lives with this. And I understand that landlords have got mortgages to pay. I do, and I know the rates are going up. I, I do know that. I, absolutely. But surely if that guy's rates had gone up so much, he couldn't afford it. Surely they'd done it before the agent told them. And it wasn't even just like it was just 30 or 40 pounds. It was a quite a lot. And that's not to say some of, there's some terrible landlords in this country, really, really bad, where they'll not just put it up at 100 pounds. I mean, the decent ones will put it up 50 a month or 100 a month. The bad ones I've seen putting it up as much as 600 a month, going for 12 to 1800. And it's just, there's just families can't afford it. There's just no way they can do it. They're already paying fortunes for energy. Um, and using the old heat or eat or heat, uh, eat or heat mantra rather. So to ask them to pay more than rent, it's just it's it's just not going to happen. There's just no way it's going to happen. So I mean, we need to be better people. We need to be a bit more compassionate and say, right, what do I need to cover my costs for this property? What would be sufficient? And then you work that out, and then you compare it to the local house loans, and even if it is less. Why put it up to it? Make it easy on people. Don't be greedy. But there's just so many people that just don't care. And there's some there's some criminal landlords in this country. There's there really is organisations from overseas, f f f far away, that are setting up companies here and, and ripping off the housing benefits system. As I, I think I mentioned that there's um, a case manager had proceeded to tell me that, that, that the, the, the amount of tenancy agreements they get or false ones is just, you wouldn't believe it. And that's all these criminal organisations thinking exactly like that, that they're, they're, it's okay, it's the British taxpayer we're ripping off, it's the government. But this is the thing, when people do these things, it justifies these measures to come in. That's what you don't get. It's like, same with the sickness benefits and many people have, and it, it's, it's uncanny. It's like the people that do really need it don't get it and the people that don't need it do get it. 
And what that does is it creates a, a divide, obviously, and the, the, it increases the measures on not or, or for reasons not to give them it because they know there's benefit cheats. And all you're doing is doing someone else out of their rightful entitlement. And if you are a healthy young chap or a healthy young woman, um, and, and you um, are only thinking like that so that you don't need to go to the job centre, then I'm sorry, but you're selling yourself short. And by the way, as well, the, I mean, people can tell the difference between that and somebody who's really sick because somebody who's really sick, you, you can just tell. Whereas somebody who's not, who's got LCWRA, if you say, look, you need to go to the job centre for this, the first thing they do is they start getting angry and say, well, I'm on LCWRA, I don't need to attend the job centre. And it's like, you've just revealed to your, you've just revealed to me why you've went for LCWRA. I mean, using, they're lying. I mean, not, not all people are lying that they don't go out the house, but you know when you're speaking to someone who doesn't go out the house, because you can tell they're vulnerable. When someone's shouting and screaming at you down the phone and telling you that you're this and that and that they don't need to go to the job centre, I mean, that's, vulnerable people don't do that kind of thing. They don't get that angry and they're switched on, you can tell. But if you told them there was a three thousand pound back payment sitting at the job centre, you can you can find you can rest assured they'd find a way. Um, as I've said before, I think. Um, but all it does is it justifies their measures, and it's the same with these local housing allowances. I mean, it's already indicated. The country's already indicated, anyways. Everybody knows, and I mean, you, with regards to housing, I mean, you don't need to look any further than than than, than Wendell on YouTube. I think it's called Wendell UK. I watched a few videos of his, and he, what he does is he goes around the country looking at these dilapidated buildings and and once pr uh, proud seaside resorts um, that have just been completely neg neglected, and uh, they're just the tourism's absolutely done in it. And it's not just seaside resorts it goes to; it's it's all kinds of town, and you can just see it has it is getting neglected. It's completely decaying. Um, and the amount of the houses like that that you get in places like Liverpool and like abandoned abandoned terraces and all that, it's like why are we not getting some kind of scheme to get these done up and and, and getting people into them? I, I just don't understand why that's not happening. I mean, you can buy some of them for a pound. I know it's more than that because the work needs done to them, but you can actually buy the leases for a pound. Some of them. So surely with all the money that this country generates just from the taxpayer alone. Uh, surely, because we're taxed on absolutely everything, your clothes, your, if you buy cigarettes, your, everything, absolutely everything is taxed to the hell, to the point where your wages aren't even your own because you're getting taxed on it all. It's, this is what happens when you don't think about the world and you don't think about what's going on. And I mean, I, I've been telling people for years and years and years that these types of things would be coming and they, they, I don't want to hear it and people would get really angry with you and, and then they're the first to start complaining about lockdown measure and it's like, but you were, you, this is what happens when you don't pay attention because if you're not paying attention you're giving consent, that's the way they look at it and everybody does give consent and it's, oh God, I don't know, it's, it's, I know it's a hard, I know fears are very, very strong, I'm, it's very, very, well it's not, it's, it's strong when it's inside someone, it's, it's difficult to come out of but um, we, don't need to fear anything. I've had this in the comments as well, where people are concerned for my safety, and I really appreciate that. But I, I, these people don't scare me. Um, I'm coming from the force of truth and love. That is that that holds a particular frequency, and it's and it's one that they cannot have anything to do with because of because they're at the opposite side of that. It, it, they can coexist together, but as radio stations coexist together, never the two shall meet. And it's 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 the same with this. As long as you think like that, if you're all fear, oh no, they're going to get me. Then guess the chances are they'll come. But um, I don't fear people who are in so much fear themselves that they need to control every single outcome because that's what it's about. I, I just it just doesn't bother me. I just I don't think anything of people like that. They're cowards. That's what they are. I'm sorry, I'm going off again. Um, yeah, so like I say, if you want to check out that, guys, if you want to see the evidence for the for the dilapidation of the UK, then that's that's on his channel. Um, and like I say, risks his safety doing it because he goes to some dangerous places um, to try and expose this stuff. And um, I mean, even the roads, the roads. I'm I'm originally from North Lanarkshire, and we used to travel up there every weekend to see my dad. And it would be like the roads up there were absolutely terrible, and the ones down here were brilliant. But it's the other way around now. 
it's just, I mean, even some of the other bad, but down here, the roads are absolutely despicable and they're not, we pay road tax. Why are we paying road tax if they're not fixing the bloody roads? Well, we, and if you're not fixing the roads, where's the money going? And it's, that's another thing that annoys me about councils. They start throwing money on things they don't need to spend it on to get rid of the budget to get the next one. And it's like, well, why do you not just keep it and put it somewhere else and use it when it's needed in something else? Like a food bank. <sighs> I mean, it's this stuff is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Um, but I mean, in the comments, there is a lot of people that are, that, are, that are vindicating this stuff and saying, yes, this is true, this is happening to me. Or it's happening to a friend of mine or... And I've spoken to loads of people on Instagram that have messaged me and they are, it's getting worse. It actually looks like it's getting worse. People getting sanctioned. They don't know why they're sanctioned. It's supposed to be lifted. And then they're looking at it. Is it lifted? They're asking me. So, well, I can't see it because I've, I've not got the accounts in front of me and it's very difficult to advise without the data in front of me. Um, but I, I, if, you're, if you think, you're, if it's saying you're sanctioned, you need to find out why you're sanctioned, how long you're sanctioned for and, what, and, and how you go about lifting it. And, or what you've actually done to, to, to incur the sanction, because if you've just missed an appointment, you need to go and tend the appointment. But this is another thing, is I probably want to say as well, um, with regards to, 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 in fact, I'll come to that in a second. I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll address the, the evictions and the homelessness, and then we can obviously move on in, 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 in landlords. I'll just finish off with that part. Um, so yeah, like people are getting evicted, or they're having to leave their homes because they can't afford local housing allowances. And I, I, again, I'll call on people not to get caught in that. It's just, I know you need to get caught in it, like, but it's just um, to know what it is. Sorry, is that is, that's know what your account is. You need to so I know how to navigate your account, what you're entitled to, where to find everything, um, and make sure. I always advise people to check their statement seven days prior to. Their state to, to their payment day because that's when the statement's generated and then that way if there's anything on there that you're not sure about then you can obviously call up straight away and try and get it dealt with before the payment date comes round and you obviously need to know how to navigate that so I would I, I did encourage people to start if they could log in every day just to see to make sure there's nothing on your to-do list that they can that can penalise you for. Make sure your 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 rents right or your your housing status is what it should be. Make sure your earnings have been reported correctly. Make sure there's no outstanding benefit recoveries. Make sure they're not taking money off or saying they're taking money off you to pay to some company. All that stuff. Get on the ball. And I spoke to so many people that, that they just they don't want anything to do with confrontation, and I understand that. And 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 but I would say this. Being an agreeable person is not going to help you because nice people will guess what? That's their favourite target because they, they know nice people just go along to get along whereas good people do the right thing. That's the difference. We need to be good people, not nice people. Um, and that, that that will go a long way to changing the game. Someone asked me, they said, is there any way you can basically teach me how to or, or, or shed some light on how to speak to some of these work coaches? And yes, if they're being difficult with you and you think they're being unfair, then I would... I challenge you to sort of stand up and look them in the eye and as a, as a decent human being and in a non-threatening or aggressive manner and just ask them why they're doing this to you. I, I think I said it in the last video and I'll say it again. That's what you need to do because it puts people in a spot, especially if you show them some humanity. Kill them with kindness, if you like. Um, and that, that's, that would be my advice to it because, they, because the minute you start getting your... even raising your voice a bit, they'll just start using their measures on you and throwing you out. And that's another tactic they use on you. They start saying, stop raising your voice when you're not actually raising your voice. There's nothing worse being told to stop shouting when you're perfectly calm. But they know that. Police use it as well. Just keep saying it. And because it, it riles you up. You're like, look, I'm calm. I'm perfectly calm. But the more they say it, the more louder you get. Basically vindicating their point. Just, again, I, don't, I wouldn't get caught in that. This is the... This is, see, these are the... They know how to deal with that stuff. They're trained for it. That is what they do. What they don't know how to deal with is decent people who are armed with knowledge and they're educated themselves and they're looking to do the right thing and they're wanting the truth. They, they, they want nothing to do with that. They, they just want people mindless, walking around, just smart enough to run the machines, as George Carlin put it, and, um, it's, and, and they can go on ruling. That's, that's, that's what they want. That's what they need. That is what they need. And as long as you walk about and you don't face the facts, that's what you're doing. And, and, and until we start sort of changing things around and, and start looking, not just at the world, but ourselves, we need to look at ourselves. As I said in that last video, 
we need to change inside. I mean, this this is no different to a smartphone. Uh, it's it's this your consciousness animates this body and it experiences this reality. It's it's this, this is how you see this reality. It's no different. So if you've got if you've got a bad reality around here, your screen's not good. Then you need to change the information that's playing. That's what I've done. I started reading different books and getting into different things, regardless of what anybody else thinks of me for it. Because that's what changes the game, because you're changing the information that's playing. Literally changing the information that's playing. Does it happen overnight? Absolutely not, it doesn't. But it does happen eventually. And that's that's what I would say. I mean, we need to shine the torch in the dark places us, and it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do, to, to, to sort of acknowledge your flaws. That's why we don't like being criticised, and I'm no different in that. Um, um, because it's pointing out your flaws, but if you can do that on your own, then you're on a winner. You're absolutely on a winner. If you can say, yeah, you're right. You're right. I've done wrong here. That was wrong. That was, that was my mistake. Then you're already becoming a better person because you're taking responsibility for your actions. Responsibility, that's what it's all about. And this is what this LCWRA is. That's about shunning responsibility. It's just, I don't, all I want to do is to sit and play my computer or watch my TV or drink alcohol or whatever it is. And and I and, and, and I don't need to go to the job centre. So if I can get LCWRA on top of my stand, I'll be I'll be golden. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And I'll say it again: you're selling yourself short. Um, and I, I would encourage you to stop it, like because this is this is why we're in this mess. Um, if if anyone starts laughing at you for trying to change your life, lose them because they're not your right. They're not your people. I had that. But every time I come up with a new idea, they'll laugh at you for it. Laugh at you for it, and it's like well. <laughs> What are you laughing for? You'll not be able to do that. And I used to believe them. It's the worst thing you can do. If they're doing that to you, you've got to lose them. They're, not, they're so down in your mind. I don't care how close you think you are. You lose them. Because they're stopping you from developing. You're, they're keeping you there. They're keeping you with them. They're holding you back. They're literally holding you back. And I, and I said it for years, but that's what the crowd's always done. Um, so that, that's what I would say on that. Um, uh, move to the next part of this which is uh, I'd like to say something a little bit more about the SMI loans now, the, I, I briefly touched on it in one of the videos but it's, 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 it's definitely one of the things that causes the most stress and, and uh, at least 50% of the calls you take someone's going to burst out crying as, if, as simple as that they are they're, they're going to do that they're going to burst out crying and you need to know how to deal with it um, but with this SMI loan stuff, this it was like I said before, it's bad enough when the rent's not paid. But at least if you get evicted, you can sort of say, all right, well, it's my mistake or whatever. It's not maybe not my mistake, but I need to go and find another property, and I'll do the same with that, and I'll try better next time. But with SMI loans, it's obviously for your property that you own to, to help with the interest for your for your mortgage. And this is there was a I think I mentioned that the lady I'd spoken to, and she was just absolutely distraught with it. And it's not just her; there was loads of them. The one I'd spoken to, in fact, um, waiting and word back three and four months and not hearing anything back and being sent the booklet and then nothing else. And it's just like, what's going on? And this person was absolutely losing, was losing her, um, her home because of this, a, a property that she'd built up for years and years and years. And um, it was, uh, it was hers. And she was losing it because she, she was getting letters for her bank. She was absolutely distraught, the lady, and I felt so sorry for her. I really did. And I thought to myself, well, why, why is it worse? And it's obvious because if you think about the, what the World Economic Forum says is you'll own nothing but you'll be happy. And I think, well, rent's bad enough, but if they sort of sabotage this, it just means that people don't, they lose their properties and they go to the bank for cheaper, of course. The bankers get it and they make money off it again. Not mentioning the, all the interest they've already taken. This is what the boom and bust system's all about. Keep it booming, get everyone borrowing, then crash it. And then every, all the money people have borrowed and all the assets they've done to build up, you then need to take those assets because they've not got the money to pay it back. Boom, your quid's in. That's how it's always been done. And it's 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 the same with this. It's no different with this. And because they don't want people owning their own homes and... The SMI loan side of it, I didn't really, I don't know anything about the application forms with that. It's literally just sending it to the case manager, and that is another problem with it. A lot of the time, you call up, you can't do anything for them. All you can do is send a communication to the case manager, ask them to call them back. You've got to read out this bloody message, and they, and they then, the person that you're reading the message to, is said, "Well, I've had this message the last time," and they, they didn't, they didn't actually reply. And then you say, right, well, I still need to read, I still need to read it to you. 
It, that doesn't just only stress me, that, even, that infuriates them even more. And because it is, and that's again, this is all done, this is all constant repetition and nonsense, which just breaks people down. It's the same with the hardship payments, asking twice why they can't bloody pay their rent or feed their family. It's, well, you're sanctioned. That's why. But why do I need to ask it twice? To stress them out. And th this is the same. You need to keep an NC if they say, right, I've got, thanks for sending that, that communication. I've got something else that I need to, I need to send, I, I need to speak about now. And if you need to send another communication to the case manager, that you, you, you basically need to, to, to read the, 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 another message to them in exactly the same way. The timeline might be different, but you still need to read it to them. And that used to infuriate people. It used to infuriate me, I must admit, it did. But it infuriated people every, even more. And why can you not just say, well, they'll call you back by the 17th at 6 or whatever it is? To stress people out because it's a bloody stress farm. I mean, this, this society has been set up that way. Wars, there's never been a time when there's never been a war. You imagine the, the, the uh, low vibrational energy that a war gives off to kids that are getting bombed in Syria or Afghanistan or something like that. Um, or even Palestine at the moment. Um, you imagine those innocent children that, that, that what they're going through while that's going on. Um, that's unbelievable, abundance, um, abundant amounts of low vibrational energy, just as this is creating abundant amounts of low vibrational energy F by the same people for reasons that I've obviously explained and I'll continue to explain going forward. Um, so the SMI loan side of it is... is like I say, there, was, there didn't have that many of them compared to the other ones, but there is every one I had was like that. And it's, I don't even know how to advise on it, to be honest with you, because like I say, I don't know that much about it. But it is a, if you are having issues with it, and I, I, people keep asking, they keep sending things and comments and stuff like that and saying, I've got this problem. I do try and help. I, I will try and help you if, you if I can, but it's difficult for me to advise. But, they keep saying, oh, look, how's this and how's that? And it's, like I say, it's very, very difficult for me to, to advise. So that's kind of why you need to sort of get on the ball with it. Because there's a booklet online, like, where you can where you can actually read everything about Universal Credit, all their policies, everything. And I would suggest if you've got a chance, at, at, at least your end of it, um, I would do that so that you at least know the policy. Because, again, knowledge is power, but only if you put it into, only if you put it into uh, practice. Um, so that's that's kind of everything I wanted to say about that. But a lot of the evictions are being called caused by these landlords that are increasing it up to amounts that they're not they're not able to pay, and um, it's that has to stop as well. So I, I, I'm not a politician. Many people have pointed that out. I'm not, I don't, and I don't want to be. I mean, there's one guy asked me to send it to a journalist and a politician. It's like, mate, you're obviously not paying attention here. I mean, that's, that's, that's the reason we're in this mess, sending it to people like that. That's why I'm here. It's just they're just not paying attention to people that's, that, that say that nonsense. And I'm sorry, but that's what it is, nonsense. Um, someone also contacted... I mean, that's another mainstream media outlet, and it's like, I wouldn't do it if they paid me. I would not do it if they paid me. I, I don't want nothing to do with the mainstream media. The mainstream media is the reason we're in this bloody mess because they've liked us for so long. So no, I'm absolutely going nowhere near them. And anybody that suggests that will be uh, they'll be responded with with deaf ears. It's as simple as that. So I do apologise, but anyone that's suggesting that is either trying to deliberately try to antagonise or they just haven't watched the video. Um, either or, it's not really appreciated. You are entitled to your opinion, but I mean, if you've listened to this video, there's just no way that's feasible. So... We'll just move on from that and, and we'll keep this alternative. We'll keep this on... Well, I mean, people keep saying, wait, you shut down on YouTube, but, I mean, I think if that was going to happen, it wouldn't have got through the algorithms when it was processing, if that is indeed what it's doing. I don't know. Um, but here we are, and I'll continue to do it for as long as I can. Um, so the next part I wanted to talk about, someone mentioned to me in the, the comments about the minimum income floor and... Um, I did want to say something about that because that's another thing that's causing stress for people. Now, what it is, is it's when you sign up, when you're self-employed um, and you're on universal credit, you get a year's grace. So for a year, you'll obviously report your income and your expenses and if it's short or you're not making like enough money and the calculations aren't there, then you'll get your universal credit. However, after one year of that, 
that it just that just automatically stops. And what they do is they 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 place a minimum income floor on there, which at the time was fourteen hundred pounds. But this this guy in the comments had said they just increased it, but it was fourteen when I was there. And what that means is is that they're putting fourteen pound hundred pounds worth of earnings on your account because they have ex they expect you have expected you to have earned that amount after one year, even if you've not. It still gets put on there. Now, for about the first six months, uh, you, you, there was something on the payment dispute where you could say, well, this has been incorrectly applied because they've not made this money, this this assessment period, and they're going to need their payment. But after about six months, it was removed. So I don't, like I say, I don't do payments. So I can only assume that when that was there, if it was, if you were putting a payment dispute through to say it was incorrectly applied, they would must have got their payment. But when it was removed, you could no longer send that. So I don't know whether they were just saying to people, well, you can't remove it. You're self-employed. And to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they're doing. Um, if anyone can shed any light on that in the comments, I'd be really grateful because I don't see anything. Once it's sent away, I don't see it. I don't see the outcome of it very, very rarely. Um, so if anyone can shed any light on that, then I'd be really grateful to hear it um, if that is what they're doing. But there's been some fantastic people that have worked there, that have worked in DWP and that have contacted me. And I'm really grateful for those comments as well. I'd like you to keep them coming. Any of your experiences that, you've, that you have had uh, with DWP, then I would like to hear about them. Um, so, and like I say, I do appreciate it. Ah, oh, where was I? Right, okay, yeah. So, um, I'm going to, uh, sorry, minimum income floor, yeah. Um, so, the, like I say, the minimum income floor, it's obviously been put there to 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 combat the fact that... Because there was obviously there was a lot of people that would call up to um, give you their earnings for their self-employment and it would come back that they hadn't made anything and then they would get their payment. But like I say, after one year that stopped. So that was obviously because there was a lot of people that would do it and they wouldn't be making anything. So they were obviously thinking, well, for people that think they can just say they're self-employed and aren't reporting any income... But it's obviously to combat that because you could, if, if they didn't have the minimum income floor, you could just realistically just apply zero earnings every month and just get your money without having to go to any interviews or anything like that. But that's why they do it. See, there's, no, there's nothing easy. Um, but like I say, they removed that. So anyone trying to start a new business is going to find that difficult as well. They know, as I mentioned with the SMI loans, they don't, they don't want people owning houses. So they certainly don't want people having businesses. And this is all just part of that. But I mean, the COVID, COVID d destroyed the economy. It completely and utterly destroyed it, as it was always supposed to do. I'm going to do videos on that. Don't worry about it, because it needs addressed. Um, and it does need addressed, and it will get addressed. Um, but that's what it was all about. And this is why I'm doing this, because for anyone that doesn't want to believe in Agenda 21, there is a few, I understand it. Before I'd known about it, well, before I started doing this job, I'd known about it. When I started doing this job, I'd realised that it was playing out in front of my eyes. Now, it's, people say, I don't believe in it, but I do think we need change. This is wrong. And then you start to look at their, their goals of uh, Agenda 21. and It's telling you how much clothing you can buy on a weekly basis or how much meat you can have or even you, Les, how many miles you can drive in 15 minute sessions I'll come to that in a second it's just it's, it's people say oh they, they wouldn't be able to enforce that and it's like right okay but if I'd said to you in 2019 with regards to the Covid measures that they were cut they would be coming in next year you would have said the same about that and yet they enforced them anyway because everyone consented to it as everything's consensual and every single person that said those words to me and I've re responded about that has just responded with silence because they know it's true. They'll enforce it as long as we consent to it. That's the point. Um, and this this, this, this is no different. Um, and like I say, this is obviously why the minimum income floor is there. It's to, to make things more difficult. I mean, there are people out there that do well at small business as well. Of course, it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, small business does do well, but that doesn't change the fact that they want to do away with it. That's the difference. They're two, they're two, they're two different things. Um, so it's just... Basically, the, the, the answer to it is, is to get informed. It's to become better people. And uh, like I was going to say there about that, you just on that, becoming better people. That you, Les, I spoke to a lady one day and she had been tracked in this 15-minute city. 
And she ended up with, I think it was about a £480 bill. And this is just what she told me. I, I, they, they do clamp people because I checked it. They, she had claimed that she was clamped by a ULES guy just outside her house. She looked out her window and noticed a clamp was there. I was like, Jesus Christ. And she'd had this fine from, from, from being in a 15-minute city. I think it was in Leicester. And um, the guy had basically said, well, you owe the money. I'm not taking the clamp off until you pay the money. And the, the girl had said, she said, but that's all I've got. I've not got anything else. I need this car to take my girls to school, my boys, whoever it was. This is all the money I've got. The guy didn't care. He didn't care. He just did not care. There was no, again, no empathy or compassion. He just didn't care. He, he relieved the lady of her money and he rode off into the sunset. And he would have slept fine that night. It's the kind of people they're employing. And this is where this is going, this ULES nonsense. And that, just while we're on the ULES, there's car, electric cars which are completely useless. They need more. This is all these just stop oil idiots shouting about fossil fuels. It's like, look mate, you're going to need m millions and millions of tonnes worth more of fossil fuels to run electric cars than what we're already using now. But that's not what it's about. I mean, these electric cars, why want everyone in them? They want these, these ULEs areas. Because if you get any, and driverless taxis, we're seeing it, it's happening. You're going to get driverless cars. You get into a driverless car. If it doesn't want you going to a certain place, it won't go there. It's as simple as that because it's in control. This is, this is where it's taken as well. We sleepwalk and don't do anything about it. It's just absolute madness. And this is why we, we need to shine a torch and become better people. And... To, to, to try and change it it's the only way we can change it and luckily going by the comments there's hundreds, there's loads thousands, thousands of comments I just like I said there's no way I could reply to all of them I wish I could I had to stop eventually um, but there's thousands of them but so many people are already well informed and there's just no they're already well on their way they know what's going on we just need to try and bring it together now um, and that's that's going to be the message throughout as I continue with these videos and that's hopefully what we can achieve with this and going by the comments as I said the people are ready for something different and, and I am as well and I'm sure you are too um, and it's time to obviously see if we can achieve that and we can because we're, we, we, it's, it's us that create this reality it's, it's, it's us that do it and that's, that's a fact that's why they need to manipulate us constantly constantly need to manipulate us um, the best analogy that I'd seen for this, I'd heard it years and years ago. Um, this is like everything through the news and wars and you're poisoning your food and big pharma, everything. It's all done to hold you in an unnatural state. Our natural state is to be joyous, happy, freedom, all that stuff, but it's the, the opposite to that. But they need to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to hold us in that bloody state. And that's exactly what they do. Now, the best analogy I'd heard for it was if you take a fish tank and you fill it up with water and you take a red ball and you throw it into it, the, natu the ball's natural state is to remain at the top of the water. The unnatural state of the ball would be on the bottom of the tank. But to hold it in that state, you would actually need to grab the ball and push the ball down to the bottom of the tank and ha hold your arm there with the ball on the bottom. You would need to remain there for as long as you wanted it to stay there. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now what happens the minute you take your hand off it? It just springs to the back to the top. Straight away, instantly. That's what's happening now. We, well, they can't take their hand off us, but we're springing back to our natural state anyway. That's what, the, that's what my awakening's been about, no doubt about it. Um, I was regarded as pretty unintelligent. Um, slow learner, no doubt about it. To, like I said, to almost to the point I was learning disabled. Not learning disabled, but learning difficulties. I was just a slow learner. But then all of a sudden I just woke up one day and wanted to know the big questions. Where are we? Where, why are we here? All that stuff. Where are we from? And I started reading books. And as I said the other day, where with the analogy... Of, of the DVD player, the information's playing in here, it's or in your head or whatever it is, or if you want to change the information of the DVD player, then you need to change the information. And that's what you're doing when you start reading new books and 
you don't have to believe it. If something so, sounds outrageous to you, no one's asking you to believe it, but at least see it through. Don't get caught in sort of cognitive dissonance or in your belief system and get angry and say, I don't want nothing to do with it because it's too challenging. See it through and say, right, well, why are they saying this? And you'll come to the end of it and you'll be in agreement and it'll change your life, I guarantee you it will. Um, it's just about picking the right books. I mean, there's a, a good analogy for that. I mean, you couldn't read all the books in, I think it was at Oxford Library, one of the big ones, can't remember what one it is, but you couldn't read all the books in one lifetime in that library. There's just too many. It's The trick is to read the correct ones, and that's what we need to do. And when you do that, it will change your life, I can promise you, because minds has changed with doing that. Um, and again, I've gone off, but... Um, when you're sort of going down the rabbit hole and connecting the dots, that tends to happen because everything does connect and you go down all these other avenues and, and, and it can take you away. And sometimes you can lose the original point that you were trying to make and the original point was obviously minimum income floor and taking taking away small business. But I just wanted to say a little bit about that because that is another part of the scam here and, and, and another part of the, the stress that it's causing. And then there was something else I wanted to talk about as well, just a little bit more about my experiences on the telephone lines as I mentioned before I mean there's people crying all the time but a lot of the problems can be avoided and this is where I mean some of these bad agents are complicit in this and this this will actually help you here because um, you need to know what you're entitled to and someone mentioned that to me as well and I'll just go into that a little bit in a second here so a big problem that, that I had when I was working there was I was noticing that when you need to change your phone number because it's a security issue, you need to phone up, change it, or you change it, and then you need to phone up and request an appointment to get it verified. When that happens, we even if the even if the sorry, if even the claimants change it, they need to call up and get us to send one of those forms off that I was telling you about the pack form, the way we communicate with the job centre. And you fill it out, you put the new telephone number on it, you change it on the account, they still can't log in because it's not been verified. But you change it anyway, you set, you fill out the form with the new phone number and then you send it across to the job centre. They call the claimant back and they verify it and that's it done. They send it to the work coach, the work coach knows who they are. But because these forms are so monotonous and you were sometimes filling in 30, 30, 35, 40 a day maybe, it gets, it gets really, really soul destroying and boring. But it's the only way we have to communicate, so you have to do it. But so many people, what they were doing, because the claimant doesn't know. And I'm sure many people will be able to sort of uh, touch on this and it, uh, have gone through it because trying to get into their account is just an absolute nightmare if you've not got it verified. So if you're calling up and you're changing the number, but what, what the agents were doing were, they were basically saying to the claimant, well, oh yes, it's been done. And then they would leave the new number in the, in the, in the notes and that again would just... It would just cut. It would catch them out. So you don't need to do that. You change it on there, and then you send it to the jobs, the form of the jobs, with a new number. You don't need to do that. And that's how you know they're lying. But people were, were, were calling up and saying, right, you'll hear back with the job centre on 24 hours, which if they're sent, they were quite good at that. They would get back. They were really quite quick, some of them. And I know that for a fact, because they would be calling them out as soon as I'd sent it when I was still wrapping up the call. So that's how, you, that's how I knew how quick they were. But if they weren't getting sent and the person's number wasn't getting verified, unable to log in, then they would call up and they would get another agent. Another agent would say, oh, it's been sent or I've sent, or I've sent another one, but it hadn't been done. But the longer this goes on, it doesn't take long before they, they start to get sanctioned. And this is this is a big, big problem. I spoke to a guy that was I was a whole year he was trying to change his bloody telephone number for. Him. I'd asked him, how are you getting by? He says, I've not been, I can't, I've been sanctioned, I can't get into my account. And it's all because agents don't want to fill out a bloody form and that that leads directly into becoming a better person. If you don't want to do the job, you don't want to help people, you shouldn't be there because so much is not filling a form in with a new number. It might just be you, it's only, it's only one form, it won't matter. They'll phone up and the next one will get it. But what if he's got an appointment the next day or the, or the day after and he misses it or something or he gets a notification that he can't read? You have actively contributed to his hunger. As I'd sent many of their names and I'm not ashamed of that. I, I don't care what anybody thinks of me for that. That was a, I could see that it was that was that alone was causing hunger and I just wasn't having it. Um if if uh, just briefly, if you call up and you change your phone number, um they need to change the phone number over. They obviously run through the checks, they fill out the form which will take between five and seven minutes, they need to confirm your uh, national insurance number with you. 
If they don't do that and you're not on there for five, seven minutes, you pretty, pretty much know that it's not been done. Thankfully, because I was sending so many people's names across, they, um, they, 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 were, they were coming down very hard on it and they had started to um, sack people for it. So I think in the end, there was a lot more people had started to um, do, do their job correctly, but that didn't change the fact that there was even agents that, yes, I've called up to change my phone number, and the minute they say that, they hang the, they hang the call up, they terminate the call, because they know it means it's one of those forms. And I, I'd spoken to loads of people who'd said, thankfully I've got through to someone that's not going to hang up on me. And I, I would tell them, well, they're hanging up on you because they know they want to change your number, and they need to fill out the, one of those forms, and they don't want to bloody do it. Oh my God, is that, yeah, that's true. That's true. But again, because of people like me, I was sending the name of the agents across to who I'd think were doing it, and it would get checked. And then they would, they would obviously get told not to do it again, or they would lose their job, or they would lose their job having done it as many times as what they had. Um, so again, it's just, just about... But that, that, again, leads directly into becoming a better person, as I've just said. So, and there's a lot of people as well that keep messaging me to ask, I always feel like a customer service agent again a lot of the time. I don't mind helping. I'll help as many people as I can. It's just there's that many comments. It's difficult. And it's difficult without the data also. Um, so, uh, if you think you're being tr unfairly treated by either your work coach or your case manager or, or whatever the case may be, there's, a, there's an independent case examiner on the government website. Um, it's... Well, it does exactly what it says in the tin. It's Sunday Independent, where you, you, if you've got a complaint, you can send the details of that complaint to them, or your situation can say, look, I don't think I'm being treated fairly, here's why. They will assist you. And like I say, every time I've seen like people taking things to tribunals or to like, case examiners, the amount of times that the lies that's been told from case managers and work coaches is unreal. It is absolutely unreal. Now, these people are paid to enact policy, right? So... If you're not enacting policy, why are you, first and foremost, why are you not doing it? Because you're paid to do it. And secondly, I mean, we really need to know why you're not doing it. Is it because you don't feel this person should deserves the help? Or have you had a bad day? Or did you wake up on the long side of the bed this morning? Or do you just enjoy making people miserable? Because if it's any of them, then you need to sort yourself out. It's not their, not their bloody fault that, 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 that you're feeling bad or you're bothered about the processes everybody most people a lot of people are bothered about the process if you don't like the job either do it better and get better feedback or leave and tell your story or whatever that's that's the choices that you're left with not just because there was i mean there's work coaches seriously disturbed work coaches and ones that were saying to guys that um oh you don't look like serious mental health problems you because they weren't visible you, there's nothing wrong with you. You should be going to work, which just makes them worse. And I remember him telling me the guy was covered in tattoos and bracelets, and I just thought, "Jeez, I don't, I'm not one to judge in looks, but if he's, if it's certainly not for that kind of thing. But if you're sitting sort of doing that, I'm sorry, but you're not only in the wrong century, but you're in the wrong bloody job. So um, this is just some of the things that that, that we're doing. I mentioned that one that sanctioned the guy for no reason without even telling him. This is the kind of people we're dealing with and they're doing that off their own back. They can't do that. They're doing it because they think they can get away with it. But, but, but if you don't take it to the independent case manager, they're going to get away with it. It's as simple as that. So I would get these case managers, what these independent examiners working because that's why they're there. They're there for that. That's their job. Their job is to make sure this is being done properly. I mean, these things are already in place. It's just that so many people think, what's the point? And, and they can be forgiven for thinking that. They really can be forgiven for thinking that um, because it is so hopeless because of the agents. But the vast majority of agents can't do anything anyway. I mean, people are always telling me, you've done more for me than, than anyone else. And I used to say to them, that actually makes me sad. Not that you've said it, that the fact that it tells me that no one else is doing their job right because I'm not doing anything special here. And this is what I used to say to them. All I'm doing is what I would expect another agent to do for me if I was in your situation. And that's, that's it. That is it. You do a job like that, right. How would I want to be treated? All right, okay, respect and decent, right, so that's how I'll do it. That's it. 
it's the same way we 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 being a person. Or, 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 treating other people ravaged to be moaning about things all the time and maybe a bit angry at things and all the rest of it, but you start to treat people the way you want to be treated. If you're doing anything otherwise, then you're demanding respect, and I'm sorry, but you're a bad person because you are asking people to give you what you which you yourself are unwilling to give other people. It's just not on, and it's these are the things that have to change, and until they are changed, no matter what we do in the benefit system, it'll this it'll continue. Um, the, the, this will continue going the way because we're all running in anger and fear and worry and jealousy and envy and it's all competition that's wrong all that, I, I hate people that say competition's healthy no it's not it's unhealthy it's unhealthy coming together that's what's healthy yes competition in a, in a, in a fun from a fun standpoint yes but when it's competing with each other for food no no that's wrong like that's for that kind of thing it has to be communal no doubt about it and until we start thinking like that it won't change and again if we don't become better people it again i heard a bro this is a philosophy that i absolutely live my life by and it's ever since i heard it and i'll continue to do so until i leave this realm do what you want to do as long as you don't impose it on anyone else and I, people that say that's oh so you can say you can just go out and do whatever you whatever you want no do what you want as long as you're not imposing it in someone so if you go out you do what you want aye but if you're going out and what you want to do is to go and hit somebody with a bat then I'm pretty sure that constitutes for imposing your will on someone else I'm sure you'll all agree so it's very simple I mean don't play loud, mu loud music at midnight at night if you yourself wouldn't like to hear loud music at midnight at night. It's, 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 this is simple. But these buggers that are in control have made it very, very complicated, or they think they have. But it's just getting back to basics. That's all it is. And once we do that, and I'll go this in, I'll get into this in my health videos about getting back to basics. And that's all I've done to get the people congratulating on my weight loss. And I really do appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm going to try and help anyone that's in that situation. I'll help them out with my experience. And it is, it's keep it simple. And I'll, I'm, the next video's going to be on that. So just keep an eye out for that. But it is just getting back to basics. Keep, keep it simple. And we'd be amazed. We'd be, those philosophies I mentioned... You would absolutely be amazed what that would do for the world. And see, when you do become a better person and you live through your heart, the, the, your life changes. It becomes better because you're not being dishonest. And I've been there. And I'm going to go into all this, the mistakes that I've made. Being dishonest and cutting shortcuts and trying to do this and doing bad things and not having any emotional comeback on it. I've made many terrible mistakes, as I've said. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll go into that. But... That's how, I mean, that is how we learn. It's, it's just a case of, 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 of cha changing that around. And it was just getting back to basics. Like, getting consistent eight hours sleep every night and drinking a glass of water as soon as you wake up. That is unbelievable what that's done for my life, just doing those two things. And not eating three hours before you go to bed. There's three things that you can do that will change your life. Get a consistent sleep rotor. Have a bottle of water ready for when you wake up. Uh, it's amazing it would be absolutely amazing what that would do for your life absolutely amazing and it's just uh, even adding a walk to that as well it's just little things it's the consistency that creates the magic and that is that's another secret it, it really is and like I say I'll go into that in the, in the next video um, I don't want to say too much about it here because it'll sort of not make the next video as good but this, this is where I want to go with this because I, I would like to help people with that and I really would because I know because if I can do it um, I've, got an, I've got an addictive personality that's why I ended up addicted to junk food I've been addicted to harder drugs as well and I'm not ashamed to say it it's, it's, it was a mistake I've made all the mistakes there is to make but I think I can learn my experience to help people get out of it and and, and this is no different and I'll, like I said I'll go into all that in the next video um, there's just a couple of things that I, I, I want to sort of talk about as well uh, with regards to what, because somebody mentioned that to see what people are entitled to and she was absolutely right to do that and I appreciate that as well because um, I'd forgotten about this and one of the things is that you can get help with an internet connection. I can't remember if it's through the job centre or through the local authority you do it. I think that lady had actually put the comment that had put the comment and said where it was. I can't remember. Um, but he... he Beside that, the flexible support fund, as I've mentioned, that you can get, you want to go back to work, you can get um, 
any kind of anything at all you need to get back to work that can get it through that fund if you need a phone you can get it through that fund if you've not got a phone to log into your account and if you've not got a phone to log into your account or you're waiting on one coming back you can phone up the line and ask them to treat it as a phone claim and get them to manage it for you just so you don't miss anything just little things like that and there's another thing as well people are always are always i was always hearing that they were struggling to get money to get to their hospital appointments but actually if you're on universal credit uh, the nhs actually runs a service um, t t they, they, I mean, they, they'll they'll cover your travel costs to to like I think it's just bus fare like or whatever, but they, they'll still cover your cost to at least get you to that that um that appointment so that you can obviously look after your health, and it's it is just knowing what it's what you're entitled to. But that flexible support fund and that is actually you actually need to fill out a pack form to request help from that, and it's the same process um as the as, as requesting anything else to it phone number change. And it'll take about five or five to seven minutes. Um, so, it's, so, so like I say, if, if they're not doing that correctly, you can obviously know from this video if they don't read out your national insurance number and uh, while they're doing that. Um, but anything of that nature goes through that fund. And as I said, you get childcare costs. Um, I think on upfront rent payments, that that goes to your. Um, I think that goes through your local authority, your local council. But there is help with that as well. Of course, there is. Of course, there is. And, um, I mentioned the childcare costs in the last one, I think. Um, but you can get that, yeah, get your first cost with that through it. And, and and I would absolutely encourage that you do that. Don't empty your bank account or borrow you from your family for rent or anything like that. Um, do it through your local authority or through the Flexible Support Fund. Because again, I've seen so many people get ruined when they when they've done such a thing. So I would I would I would stay away from that. Um, and it is. It's just. It's just about, it is just about knowing what you're entitled to and if you can log into your account sort on a daily basis, I know it's annoying to log into but if you can sort of keep an eye on it and get to grasp, grasp with it and just well remember actually, on your statement, if you scroll right to the bottom of the page in the statement, you'll find two kind of, kind of square box, like a box with a square in it and it was, I can't remember the exact wording on it, but it tells you exactly what you're entitled to and how much you can, or what you can receive, like free or, uh, eye tests and stuff like that, or free glasses and stuff like that as well. But it's all in this statement right down the bottom. And this is, this is a big part of the problem. This is why people can't get by or get through because they don't know what they're entitled to. Um, and that, that creates a big problem because if you don't, again, knowledge is power, but only if you put it into into practice if you don't know then you are you, the chances are you're going to become a mark for a bad agent that can just tell you whatever you want to hear oh so i've done this everything's fine which was constant just pure lies they would get through to me and saying it's not fine it's i'm really sorry but it's not fine and see this is what i used to say as well for and i used to say this to people for you to lie to someone and tell them a complete load of nonsense only makes that call harder for somebody like me who's going to tell them the truth because you've lied to them and I have to tell them that you've lied to them, which only increases their anger for me. Because and it's understandable, I'm the I'm the person they're speaking to, I'm the only po the only point of call. Um and I'm the person they direct that at. This is again leads into becoming a better person. You need to take responsibility. It's about taking responsibility. Without it, we're nobody, we're nothing. If we just oh, it's nothing to do with me, it's his fault. It, it, it describes it perfectly. Absolutely perfectly with that phone, changing the phone number. I can't be bothered filling out this form today. Um, I'll just hang up or I'll tell them it's done and then the next person will deal with it and then that person does it. And then that person does it and then that person, then they get to me and say, oh, well, actually, and the more times it's happened, the more, and, and I've, I've had people totally drained by having to tell them this. Like I said, the guy, one year, he was waiting one bloody year. I mean, it was, I'd told this to a manager, like, he's waiting a year. That is unacceptable. And that is being a bad person because you're picking up, you're stealing a wage, you're picking up a salary, and you're nobody doing your job. So it's as simple as that. It needs to be that needs to change. So, but if you know the process a little bit, which is why I've done this, um, then you can't be manipulated by them. And that that's true of life. If you've got knowledge about life or about the world, you, people can't manipulate you. They cannot manipulate you. Um, and just just on that, actually, just well remember that. There was some some guy said in the comments he'd asked if. He said they thought it was a bit strange that the DWP or Universal Credit subcontractor calls out to another company and I'd responded as it is, but um, every company in Britain does that now. So it, the vast majority, so if you, it doesn't matter 
whether it's O2 or JD Sports or, or whoever it is, if you um, call their helpline, the chances are you're speaking to a call centre that's got nothing to do with them. All they're doing is passing a message across to, uh, to, 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 to the manager who they are in contact with. So anyone have got any urgency with any company, um, I mean, I was at DFS, they, 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 were, they were like that as well. If you've got any urgency with them, then I would call them up to the call centre and say and ask them, do you work directly for DFS? Do they, or whoever it is, do they pay your wages? Um, and if the answer is no, then you have to say, well, you can't help me. I need the manager of the company to phone me. And that's how it needs to be done. That's just, what, that's just one way to do it. Because the, the vast majority of call centres can't help you. All they can do is pass a message across. And just well, just well, remember actually, just on DFS, there is just a there are a couple of things I would like to mention about DFS, just in case you have um, had any dealings with them. Um, there's a sofa clear claim on there that they sell you as insurance that you don't actually need. And then when they deliver you a bad sofa, um, they they then tell you that that's the insurance you've claimed off, but it's not. The insurance comes with it, and they were always telling people that it was the law they were allowed to fix it. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. They need to manipulate you into consent for that. If they deliver a, a faulty product to your door and you say I don't want that, and they start saying, "Well, it's the law," you say, "No, no, no, no! Only if I consent, you can do that. I want what I paid for, which is a brand new suite." But then when people were accepting it and getting it fixed. They thought they were claiming off the sofa clear that they'd paid 300 quid for, when actually they would have got the same service had they had paid the 300 pounds. So sorry, I just had to drop that in. If you are a customer of DFS, that is that is one way they get you. So um, I, I, I was initially going to do a video on it, but I don't think there's enough, enough there, so I'll just drop it in at the end of this one. So if that helps anyone, then you're welcome. Um, but that, that that's pretty much, pretty much it that I can remember now. See, the difficult thing is, because I don't, I mean, I'm not a writer, I'm not a, and I'm not an actor or any drama or anything like that. And I've tried to write things out, and I just I end up writing it out, and then just sort of going with my heart anyway. So the best thing I can do, I think, going forward, is just to go with my heart and have a write an idea down, maybe, and just take it from there. Um, if there is anything I've missed, if there's anything that you need any advice on, I, I've already said I'm on Instagram. I know there's obviously personal things that don't want to discuss in comments on YouTube. That's fine. You can obviously get me on Instagram. Um, I, I want to say again, I just thank every single person that's tuned into this um, and shared it and told people about it and liked it and commented. I, I just, we're nothing. People like me are nothing without you, with our channels and stuff like that. Anyone's got a channel, they need people. The people are paramount to this situation. It's you that's going to change it, not me or anyone else. It's all of us together, and we're all equally important in it. Um, and, I, and I would encourage to try and maybe take on some of the advice and just change your life, man. Change your change your thinking about you and yourself. And like I say, the next video is going to be about that, so I'm actually quite looking forward to doing it because um, it will help people. There's no doubt about it. Um. But yeah, it's just it's just been a it's been a, a really amazing experience just to see how how much love there is out there for the truth because people do appreciate it in a in that setting when they know this is happening to them and I've I've been it's been more than a pleasure giving you and like I say if there is anything else that you do you think I've missed out or that you maybe think it should be addressed or you've got any questions on then you obviously know where to find me if you don't want to leave a comment you'll get it on uh, Instagram. I'll obviously well look through some of the notes I have made just to see if there is anything else then and I'll, I'll certainly drop it in in the next video if I can. Um, but again, I, I just can't thank you all enough. I mean, I just, I love you all. Honestly, you have been amazing to me. The, the, just the message of support is just, like I say, it's been amazing and I, I was in a pretty emotional state the other day. They're reading some of the, the kind words that people would send you and again, if I could give you all a big cuddle, I absolutely would and Again, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you on the next video and thanks again for watching.